Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back, or welcome to another Bangs Audio Review. That's going to fall off. I'm going to put this over here. Um, as I as I can slowly get started here, sorry about that. Um, I didn't realize I still had my vape in front of me. And well, anyway, hey kids, don't start that shit. You don't want to get hooked on nicotine. Trust me. I smoked for 27 years. I've been vaping for seven. It's got its hooks in me, man. It's no good. It's no good at all. So don't even start. All right. Um, PSA done. I have <clears throat> the BGVP DMA for you today. Okay. Bone conduction week, right? It started last Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, it's been about a week anyway. Um, we're going to wrap it tomorrow with like sort of an overview uh, and I'm going to include some piezo uh, sets with that too, but if I haven't made it clear already, bone conduction piezoelectric may have similar results, but they are different drivers. So the DMA is a true bone conduction driver, two of them per side, along with two BAs per side, along with one dynamic driver. Let's take a look at the specs, shall we? Um, sensitivity 106, impedance 17 ohms. These things are sensitive, man. I look. I'm at third. I'm in the 30s, low 30s here, low 30s, 31, 32, about a third of the way on the uh, iFi Zendac V2. So yeah, you don't have to turn them up loud. They are not hard to drive. Um, you don't have to turn them a lot, uh, up a lot to get them loud. Okay, back to his uh, frequency response range, 10 hertz to 40 kilohertz. I believe that. Um, cavity material is uh, 3D printed resin and aluminum. So you've got uh, like two, two different materials going on for the uh, acoustic cavity, which is pretty cool. Um, Sonian BAs, there's one Sonian BA, there's one Knowles BA, there's one 9.2 millimeter nickel plated dynamic driver and two Sonian bone conduction drivers per freaking side. They were not fucking around when they made this set. I can tell you that for sure. Uh, nice wire too, nice cable. Uh, 6N OCC silver plated modular on the termination and it is MMCX. There you go. I don't have a problem with MMCX. I really don't. Um, I'm not saying I prefer it over 2-pin. Two 2-pin two is predominant. It is, you know, most everywhere. Um, so having a few um, MMCX sets now, I can tell you that I don't care. I, I like the connection, actually. It's, it's pretty solid. It feels more solid than 2-pin in some respects. So yeah, anyway, but just thought you should know. Let's do a little unbox, shall we? It has a half sleeve. Saving the planet, half a sleeve at a time. Love it. On the inside, it's magnetically sealed. Ooh, there's magnets, it's sparkly. Here is your owner's manual. Very nicely done. Oh yeah, look at that. I need to learn Chinese. Mandarin, specifically, I think would be a good idea. Um, then you get a box of accessories. These are all the ear tips that comes with it, that come with it. Um, so you've got a nice selection, bass ear tips, vocal ear tips, and foams. I love it when they include enough to make people happy. Different people with different tastes. Nice. I am so we're in here. There's a little bag here at the bottom. Probably that had the cable in it, I'm assuming, which was probably in the case. Wait till you see the case. Case is bonkers. Let's look at the case. This feels like real leather. It might be protein leather or vegan leather, but it feels real to me. Um, in here, we got the 3.5 millimeter single-ended termination. So you can use that if you'd like. I love modular cables, or at least the choice, but modular, you know, it's even better. For me, like, as far as the measuring goes, it was great because all I had to do was change out the end and plug it into the old, you know, sound card there and I was good to go. So yeah, really nice case, big case, not a pocket case, a bag case. 
Um, but it was big enough to throw in the um, yeah Muse Hi-Fi M3-2. So that was nice. Took that to the grocery store. Did not mow with these guys on because, as you know, I would have had to turn them up too loud. They're semi-open back. Let's get into a little bit of build, shall we? Nice unboxing. Really no complaints. Hey, there's the wind. Hey, buddy. So, on the build, as mentioned, you've got a combination of aluminum, which is the faceplate, and 3D printed, I would imagine, high medical grade resin. Um, you can see the dynamic, you can see the bone conduction. You know that's the bone conduction because it's there's no acoustic tube because it's it vibrates, right? Bone conduction drivers, just really quick, from what I'm what I've understood in doing some research on it, is that there is a <clears throat> like high tensile strength um, steel rod in there that vibrates inside that housing and that therefore creates the resonance that gets conducted through your bones. You don't have to have them in contact with a bone for it to work, nor do you have to have a PZT in contact with your bone for it to work. Um, different types of conduction, right? Um, piezoelectric is more current and this is more vibration, but they're both bone conducting. They're just a different way of doing it. It's really fun when you learn new stuff, you know? I, I, I like learning new stuff. It keeps me young. Anyway, um, also nicely uh, done here with the open, semi-open back, the venting. Um, right side is red, left side is blue. If you can pick that up. It says BG VP DMA on each of the shells. These are available in, I think, a couple of different color schemes. Um, and these were sent to me by my buddy Sforcible, so um, thank you for that. I will think about sending them back to you. I'm not sure I'm going to. No, I'm just kidding. He'll stop sending me sets if I do that. Um, so anyway, yeah, they will be going home, but at some point I will be purchasing these. I, I'm pretty sure. Um, in fact, I am definitely sure I will be. They're such a different experience, such a cool, such a cool experience too. Um, so yeah, build quality is A+. Plus. Um, cable, definitely a solid A on the cable. Um, and they're somewhat large. I, here's my, here's my only complaint on this set. And it's just because of my ears. It's not because of anything else. Um, nozzle size is probably fine. It's like five and a half, maybe six millimeters. They, they make contact with, um, part of my outer ear, inner outer ear, um, to the point where after about an hour or so, I felt myself having to adjust them. And after a couple hours, I had to take them out for a little bit. I don't care, it's fine. I mean, I didn't want to take them out, trust me. I didn't want to stop listening to them. Um, but I did I did have a little bit of discomfort um, and sort of physical fatigue after a while. That is just my experience, okay? Everybody has different ear physiology, uh, different shapes, different sizes, all of that. I guess my only caution is that if your ears are on the smaller side or if your ear canals are on the smaller side, you might have a fit issue with these, okay? That's that's about it. In order for them to house what they have to house, they've gotta be on the larger side. I mean, it's just, that's a function of their design. So, but again, like I said, that's a very personal thing. That's a very physiological thing and um, will not bother everyone. In fact, probably not most people, honestly. Yeah, the DMA. Oh my goodness gracious. This was a really, really fun experience. Um, before I get into like full-on sonic compressions, I'm actually going to bring the graph up so I get that in front of us. Um, the uh, I posted this on uh, the community section a couple days ago after I took the measurement. We'll, we'll get into that. Sounds like a graphs, go figure. Really well balanced. Um, but base, oh, yummy base. So here's what happened. I'll try to make a long story short. Um, and this is why, like midstream, like mid testing phase over the past couple of days, I ran into an issue. I, <clears throat> I'm a klutz. I have like permanent sea legs. Um, I'm a sailor. I've been sailing since I was like seven or eight years old. 
Uh, I'm not very graceful on land. Um, get me on the water, I'm fine. You know, I have no problem with seasickness or balance or anything like that. Like, it's kind of where I feel like I should be most of the time, even though I'm not. On land, I have some issues. <laughs> so, um, mid midday yesterday, yesterday afternoon, you know, I'm like in, I'm, I'm doing the test tracks and listening to albums and stuff like that. And, you know, I had to go upstairs, do a little like laundry, whatever. I'm coming back down the stairs empty handed. I'm thinking about getting back to the DMA because I'm like so excited to, you know, listen to them some more. And um, I caught an edge. Uh, my, my sneaker tread caught the carpet and I took the last three steps um, and broke my fall with my face. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't, if I lost consciousness, it was not for more than a couple of seconds. I did see stars. I have a shiner and a fat split open lip and a bruised ego and, you know, my next little step. And it didn't help my back, I'll tell you that, that's for sure. But everything has come back to sort of normal levels of pain and discomfort today so like i'm okay but you know I, I didn't take any really any time off i had to go get my kid at camp like 45 minutes later you know i, I shook it off and um and got back into testing um later that evening after he went to bed and then when i got up the next day and i didn't really i wasn't really paying attention it just it occurred to me that the intensity of the set um, seemed a little bit out of proportion. And I, I said as much, like I said as much, I responded to somebody's comment, um, might have been Rogue or it might have been um, Hell Yeah TV, the dude from Ukraine, might have been one of those guys that said, hey, maybe my ears are broken, but those these don't sound really that overly intense to me. And they're right. Okay, they are somewhat intense because of the tuning, because of the bone conduction, because of, because of, because of. I love them for that. But I think, I, you know, I, I rattled my marbles a little bit. You know, not concussion, like, don't worry, you know, I'm not stupid. Like, if I felt nauseous or, like, I couldn't stay awake or had bad headaches, I would have gone to the emergency room and had the grandparents pick up my kid. None of that happened. But what did happen is it shook me up and I think it, it messed with my hearing a little bit. It just messed with my brain a little bit, you know? So I was like definitely more sensitive to how these were presenting themselves yesterday. Now, today I wake up, I feel better. Body's more or less, like I said, back to the normal state of discomfort. Um, and, uh, you know, I just felt more myself. Yesterday, I felt like I got into a bar fight or got hit by a car. Today, I feel like normal, which is whatever normal is for me. That's what I feel like today. And um, and they sound freaking great again. Like, I go right back to my initial impressions after having them in for, like, literally 30 seconds going, oh, my freaking God, um, these are good. And And that's where I'm back to. Thankfully, you know, I, I was off my game yesterday. I should have probably just taken the day off, but wife's traveling, kids at camp. I just, you know, I try to take advantage of the time that I have to do the testing because, you know, I, I'm lucky and unlucky. You know, unlucky because I'm out of work because of my back. Surgery, September 9th, by the way. Um, lucky that I do have me time. I do have time to do this and to pay full attention, you know, give my my full attention to sets. And the DMA is a set that demands your full attention. It is not a background set. And I think that the fact that it is on the more intense side of things, uh, and again, I will say not too intense, just more intense than some, um, it kind of messed with me yesterday because of what happened. Now I'm back, I'm good, and I can appreciate them for what they are. And what they are is, what they are is just incredible. I mean, it really is. This is, what's the best way to describe this set? Visceral. I know that they're messing around with like haptics and headphones now and you know, for gaming and stuff like that. I think this is like a cut above that, right? They're still kind of working on that technology. It's more of like a parlor trick at this point. It's not really like 
it hasn't caught on. I can see bone conduction drivers catching on to an extent. They may not be for everybody. I mean, yes, the set is got it's it's intense. Like you're not gonna, it, you are gonna pay attention to it whether you want to or not. You know, and luckily you want to because they sound freaking amazing. But yes, um, you will be paying attention. Maybe at some point, maybe after, you know, like after I buy myself a pair um, in, you know, a couple of months or whatever, and I have them for a while, I'll be able to listen to them in a more normal way than I do when I'm trying to analyze, right? Like some sets you literally, you can just kind of drift off with. Like I could do that with uh, the Da Vinci. I could drift off a little bit. The new Adonis, the SL41 Mark II, like set and that's not any knock on them they're just a little more mellow <laughs> they're just a little bit smoother and not as quite as crazy intense as the dma is now i keep saying that word and yeah part of that is because of my experience yesterday they're not over the top they're not they're not over the top they're not fatiguing they don't make you tired they they, they just demand your attention and i love that about them i think that they're just such a great great set for that reason because they're different because you feel them because of the bone conduction because of the high 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 quality drivers including the BAs including the dynamic everything just comes together on this set to create just a really amazing listening experience like that's the best way I can put it um, they're unique. They are different. If we look back at sort of the beginning of this week, um, or beginning last week, uh, when I started sort of warming up to it, I had the Plutus Beast in it. And by the way, guys, the Plutus Beast is still a really crazy good value set. If you want to get into bone conduction, this would be a, a wonderful place to start. I know there are less expensive versions. I know like the CVJ Kanoka, I think I've heard some good things about. That's like 20 bucks. So maybe you could start there, but I know this one is good. And going back to it and comparing it to the wind and then comparing it to the DMA and then, you know, it just held up really, really well, you know, for something that you can get for probably around 70 bucks when it's on sale or less. Kind of can't go wrong. I don't know if I did it justice when I reviewed it several months ago. But anyway, it gets a nod now. Um, the DMA is just next level. So you look at the Plutus piece is really, really good. The wind is just, it's a notch up. And then the DMA is like somewhere up there. Literally like just complete next level shit going on with this set. Completely. Let's give some examples as to what I'm talking about here, because sometimes it's hard. It's like easy to just say that and be like, oh, yeah, you know, they're really great and different and stuff. Um, I can say that all day, you know. Hopefully you guys trust me at this point to know that I'm, you know, I'm accurate. But it does help, I think. It helps to look at the graph and it helps to look at a couple of test tracks to let you know what, what is different about them. I have this going back to um, 10 because they say it extends down to 10 hertz and uh, I would say that this um, it looks like a roll off a little bit right going from around 90 decibels on the SPL down to about 86 87 doesn't feel that way it feels you feel that sub bass you feel it it's got more rumble I think than any set that I've experienced so far really refined and really well done but it's there. I mean, it's just, it's there. Here's the perfect example of that, okay? Let's bring up a song, because this will be, this will be good to reference for you. You could try it for yourself. Um, when I started listening to Ascensionism, Ascensionism from Sleep, to Sleep Token, I can talk, it's my lip, but it kind of hurts. Um, from Sleep Token, Take Me Back to Eden, album, wonderful, amazing, terrific. Um, there is, at the beginning of the song, that I'd never heard before, there's sub-bass rumble going on. It's like, I thought there was a garbage truck going by, by my house. I was like, what the fuck is that? And then I just listened to it. I was like, oh my god, that's in the song. Like, I took them out, and I'm like, is there a 
truck around here somewhere? No. It was the BCDs vibrating from whatever track they have at the beginning of the song that you can't hear unless you got the DMA in or something like maybe the DMA, but I didn't pick it up on the wind. I didn't pick it up on the Plutus Beast, just on the DMA. So, they've got sub bass. That's a perfect example. Okay? And it repeated itself over and over and over again from, you know, hip hop to Agony by Slaughter to Prevail. Those drops at 230, 245 in, um, in Agony, like, I felt them, heard them, slash felt them more than I have in any other set that I have owned or tried or, you know, basically had in my ears. So, that being said, I don't want you to feel like this set is only about the bass because it's not. It's it's also about the treble, not just about the bass. It's also about the mids, just not just the bass. Okay, so... Uh, back to our graph here. Um, you can see how well balanced this is. If I slip this little slider down to the top, the peak of the treble at around 5k, it's just, I think it's like 91.5 or 6? 6. 6. 91.6 decibels there. Whereas your bass, mid bass, um, kind of peaks at about 90.6. So there's about one decibel difference between the two. That is really, really good balance. Also, not a huge recess here um, in the mids. The mids are like vocals are great on this. Vocals were fantastic. Female vocals, K-pop, Melody Gardo, Anna Trepko, Grace Potter, Thank you for that suggestion, by the way. That was, that's a really good track, too. Um, it didn't matter what female... Courtney LaPlante. It didn't matter what female vocalist was going on. Uh, the, the vocalist from Crypta, who's just, like, crazy. That's not clean vocal. That's But that's great. She's great. Um, and then male vocals had the power and the weight, whereas female vocals had not too much weight. Like, Melody Gardot was sitting in front of me, not on my lap, even though I'd rather she's sitting on my lap, but she was sitting in front of me about, oh, I don't know, three or four feet in front of me, instead of right in my face. I didn't need to have a breath vent. You know, like, she was far enough away to keep it from being too heady and intoxicating, which can happen with her voice with a set that's not tuned well enough. This one's bang on. Haha. <laughs> um... So yeah, so it, it has like the extension. We'll talk a little bit about like the text, right? So detail retrieval, as you might imagine, is freaking sick, okay? You will not miss anything with this. Micro details, micro nuances, whatever you want to call them, they're there for you to hear whenever you want. Like you just like, if you want to just pay really close attention, all right, here's another perfect example. All right, let's go. Let's let me check my time because I was like, oh, oh, 2538. I got to wrap this up in two minutes. Sorry, guys. Anyway, I was going to mention um, Fang Lu, um, the uh, the Pippa, the, the lute, like being able to hear all of the, the notes and like second and third harmonics and like echoing through whatever recording situation that they were in, that kind of stuff. So, Plenty of details. Soundstage, excellent. Not huge, not huge, but very deep. Okay? High enough, wide enough, deep. Very deep. Excellent. Um, yeah, the set is just... Uh, it's it's next level. It's, it's final 5%. And it gets my 100% highly recommended. Absolutely. I'm going to wait for a sale probably in September, maybe right before I go in for surgery so I have them for recovery. That would be awesome. That's probably what I'm going to do. Can't live without them, at least not for too long. Um, so, yeah. The BVG... BVP... BV... Oh, God. BGVP DMA. Amazing. Awesome set. 
Tomorrow we're going to wrap the week with a little overview of the three bone conduction sets that I tested this week, along with some of the PZTs and the differences. And with that, you know I love y'all. Be careful, be safe, be nice. Nothing but peace to you, and we'll see you.